Very good. And opponent Stephen Simpson. Very good. Uh, gentlemen, we are going to start with your two minute introductions. And we are going to start with our incumbent, Mr. Brown. Friends, I believe very firmly that America is a pivotal point in our history. And the question is, are we going to continue down the course of greater spending, more debt, poor economy, more intrusion in our lives by the federal government? Or are we going to lose our freedom? And I believe we're headed towards an economic collapse of America. Are we going to change courses and start putting you, the American citizens, and your freedom back is the primary focus from Washington, D.C. In Washington, I've been leading the charge in cutting spending. I've been leading trying to create a stronger economy and bring jobs to Georgia. In fact, I led the way to bring Caterpillar here. I've been leading the way to repeal Obamacare and give us health care policy as a medical doctor I know the kind of health care policy that we need. And that's one that makes your health care cheaper. And where you and your doctor make the decisions, not some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. And heaven forbid the IRS. <laughs> I've been leading the way in Washington, as well as here in Georgia, to help our constituents. I've helped over 5,500 constituents with their problems with the federal government. I've helped businesses and local government get over $17 million worth of grants. As an example, to build rural health clinics, to create jobs. But I've been leading the way in Washington, and if you'll elect me to be, continue to be your U.S. Congressman, I'll continue to lead the way to fight for freedom, to change the course of America so that you can run your lives without all this government intrusion. Sir, thank you. Mr. Stephen Simpson, two minutes. Good morning. I'm Stephen Simpson. I've never run for an office in my life. I spent 20 years in the military, 12 years in the banking business, six years in the construction business that I can talk about, but I'd rather not. My, my wife and I met in college. She's an educator. We've been married for 39 years. We have two sons. Our younger son is an Arabic linguist. Deployed even as we speak, keeping us a little safer, to never be safe, safer from the bad guys. And he's also the fifth generation in my family to serve in uniform. We need people in Washington who genuinely care more about their country and the people they represent than they do themselves are just getting reelected. You heard my opponent speak. If you sift through the verbiage, I think the little old lady would ask, where's the beef? We've got to have men and women who are willing to roll their sleeves up. I did, had the opportunity to meet Ronald Reagan and to thank him for rebuilding the military after the Carter years. President Reagan looked at me right in the eye and said, Stephen, I didn't do that. He said, the way we got the country back on the right track is I walked down to Temple O'Neill's office and I said, Mr. Speaker, you're a Democrat or, or you're an Irishman. And I'm an Irishman. You're a Democrat, and I'm a Republican, but we're sent here as representatives to do the people's business. Can we do the people's business? You won't find anyone who's more conservative than I fiscally or socially, but it's time to do the people's business. I sat across the table from my Russian counterparts during the Cold War. That was tough. But I also sat across the table as a small business owner making payroll and tell a guy, and I knew his wife, his family, his children, and I said, we just can't afford you. That's tough. We've got to have people that will work together, do the people's business, and come back times to uh, ask what's important to you and get the people's work done. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Gentlemen, we're going to move into our questions. You're going to have one minute each to respond. Uh, we are going to actually start with Mr. Brown. First question, sir. What specific qualifications, skills, and experience do you possess that would make you a good U.S. representative? Well, I've been a good U.S. representative for three terms now, and I appreciate y'all's vote. Uh, as I say, I, for me, it's about principle. It's not about party. It's not about 
politics. I stand firm on the principles that our founding fathers gave us in the U.S. Constitution. In fact, there are four questions I ask myself about all legislation. And if all four are yes, I vote yes. If one's no, I vote no. The first question is, is it right? We all have one standard what's right and wrong, and that's what our Creator says. So it doesn't fit the Judeo-Christian biblical principles that this nation was founded by. The second question is, is it constitutional according to the original intent? Third, do we need it? Fourth, can we afford it? If all four are yes, I vote yes. If one's no, I vote no. I'll continue to stand firm on principle. It is not about policy. I mean, about politics. It's not about party. It's about policy and about principle, and that's exactly what I've been doing as a U.S. Congress. Sir, thank you. Mr. Simpson. I graduated Georgia Military College Prep School 44 years ago. Was taught duty, honor, country, and character above all. Character matters. It doesn't do any good to stand up and, and give a four point bureaucratic uh, substitution for good common sense. We need common sense people in Washington. We also have, have to have credibility if we're going to get anything passed. The first step in credibility is character. I'm not a saint by any means, and I'll answer any question that you ask me, but my opponent refuses to answer the question as to why he lost his job at the medical practice in Watkinsville and why he can't get hospital privileges at any hospital in Georgia. You know, it's, it's all about doing the people's business, being honest, and character matters. Sir, please, please remain standing. I've got to answer this because he's just made some outrageous claims that are not factual. And I must answer this. Well, You've got to give me some time to do so. Unfortunately, this, this is not the forum for it. If this were a debate, certainly we would, we would afford you that opportunity as a rebuttal. However, this is a forum, questions only. Well, my, my opponent is going to a campaign of desperation and lies. And it's time for this to stop. And that's exactly what this is all about. Well, he, he's certainly going to have his minute at the end, most certainly. You're going to have an opportunity at the end for your closing arguments. Fair enough? Fair enough. Moving on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Simpson, we're going to start with you. If elected, what would be your legislative priorities? Just like having to sit across the table as a small businessman and telling people we can't afford it. People around the country are hurting. They're hurting because the economy is upside down. Uh, answer any of those you, you want to any credible person. Uh, my opponent stood at the truck stop in Jackson next to Eric Cantor and spoke in favor. Stood next to him and said, I'm in favor of the 20% tax cut for small businesses. And then he stood on the House floor and said he was for it. And then he voted against the tax cut. It's about the economy. Don't, uh, don't trust me. Google it. You'll find out what's the truth. I'm running a positive campaign, and I'm answering all, all, the, all the questions. The most important thing is fundamental tax reform that will uh, uh, that will encourage business development and not penalize people for time, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Brown. One minute, sir. If elected or re-elected, uh, what would your legislative priorities be? Well, I want to get my Patient Option Act passed into law. As long as we have a Democrat president, as long as we have Harry Reid running the Senate, that bill will not pass. But Hopefully we're going to have a Republican president and a Democrat Senate. We can pass my Patient Option Act. 51-page bill has been endorsed by Freedom Works, as well as RedState.com. We'll make health care cheaper for everyone, provide coverage for all Americans, and will save Medicare from going broke. We've got to put the health care decisions back in the hands of the American people. We have to get jobs and the economy going. I 
introduced by Jobs Act that would permanently reduce taxes on businesses as well as reduce capital gains taxes permanently to zero. Ask Carl Laffer, the famous economist who worked with, with uh, Ronald Reagan about that, and he said, Paul, there's no telling how big a bill that would be. How many millions of jobs would be created? It would bring a trillion dollars into our economy overnight. And I'll continue to work to bring jobs and industry here to Georgia, just like I did with Caterpillar. Sir, thank you. We're actually going to start with you, Mr. Brown, on the next question. Uh, one minute to respond. What are the primary issues that differentiate you from your opponent? Well, I've been a leader in Washington to stop the outrageous spending. I also have been a leader to stop the, the uh, earmarking process that more people have gone to jail because of that than anything else. I've been a leader in stopping the wasteful spending. I want to go back to constitutionally limited government as our founding fathers meant for it to. And I'll give you some examples. I'd like to get rid of the Department of Education. I'd like to get rid of the EPA. We need to get rid of the Department of Energy. I'm an ardent supporter of the fair tax, and I will continue to fair fight for the fair tax as long as Georgia's continue to send me to Washington. Sir, thank you. Mr. Simpson, what are the primary issues that differentiate you from your opponent, sir? One minute. I genuinely care more about my country and the people I will represent than I do getting reelected or just myself. Uh, interestingly, I, I support uh, uh, Tom Price as a doctor from Georgia in the legislature or in the Congress. Uh, his bill has over 41 co-sponsors. My opponent has one. Uh, it's, it's all about credibility and get, getting the job, job done. Uh, the only reason I'm, I'm running is because we need people in Washington who don't check their common sense at the door. Uh, people who can sit down, roll their sleeves up, and come up with common sense solutions rather than saying, saying you're a leader and 287 people are, are claiming that same toll. Uh, my view is I'm, I'm a leader. As a leader, if you win, the team gets the credit. If you lose, you don't get something passed, it's my responsibility. Thank you. Please remain standing. Your final question, gentlemen. If elected, how would you make contact with Walton County citizens to ensure representation of our community? One minute, sir. I'm a temporary resident of one of the finest tractor barns in Good Hope, Georgia. Uh, the people in Walton County are, are, are very important, whether it's uh, on, the, on the square or First Friday, or if it's at the pot, potluck. Uh, I will not brag about being very good or, uh, at a lot of things, but I'm very good with people, understanding what the issues are, and I, I will continue uh, to spend quite a lot of time in Wal Walton County and all of the 25 counties in the new uh, 10th Congressional District. Thanks. Sir, thank you. Mr. Brown, one minute, sir. I've already started the process of representing the people here in Walton County. We've already had a town hall meeting. I do conference calls with people all over the district with constituents so that they can tell me about issues that's on their mind, we can answer questions, and I can take suggestions. I've been here already, and I will continue to do so. The, uh, the thing is, I, I represent the 10th Congressional District. I'm excited about having Walton County being brought into the 10th Congressional District. We, uh, I have a district director that I've told to go to every single city council meeting, county commission meeting, chamber meeting as well as development authority meeting that we possibly can get to. And so you'll see my representative here. In fact, I'm told all across the 10th Congressional District now that I must have four or five Jordans because he's always there. But I'll be here in this community. I will continue to be here in this community. I grew up in Athens, Georgia. I live in Oconee County. This is my area and I love Walton County and I'll continue to represent you. Sir, thank you. 
Gentlemen, we're going to move to your closing remarks. Each of you do have one minute for those. We're going to start with uh, Mr. Stephen Simpson. One minute, sir. Thank you very much. I'm a pretty simple person. Character matters and leadership matters. Uh, Susan and I lived with our boys, Virginia to Arizona, two tours in Europe, two tours at the Pentagon. Made a home wherever we went. It's not about uh, introducing legislation, another bill to nowhere, but it's about doing the people's work. I've served my country before, and I'm ready to serve again. With your help and God's grace, I'll make you proud. Sir, thank you. Mr. Paul Brown. One minute, sir. You think of three words and know how I operate in Washington and how I operate here in Baltimore County. I'm a conservative, I'm a constitutionalist, and I'm a Christian. First and foremost, I'm serving my Lord Jesus Christ and letting everything flow out of that. The four questions I'll ask myself, is it right? Is it constitutional? Do we need it and can we afford it? I promise you, I'll continue to stand firm on those four questions. I'm fighting for liberty. I'm a U.S. Marine. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to back up. I'm going to continue to work to give you the liberty and freedom that our founding fathers gave us. And I need your help. I need your vote, early voting, all the way up to the 31st of this month. Please go to polls Monday and vote for me because I will continue to fight for freedom here in America. God bless you. Sir, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your um, candidates for District 10 U.S. Representative.